my friend reached out to me who works for a commercial real estate firm and he said, hey, Patrick, I just don't think our company's outbound is as good as it could be. I think there are some ways we can improve it. We don't really do much personalization. So I decided to put together this table and show him the capabilities of what you could do with Clay for commercial real estate. But when I was looking back at it, I realized it's just a great use case for companies in general. So I'm going to run through it, how I did it, and what the email actually looks like at the end. As you can see, I have imported a bunch of companies and they're all located within New York City. What I wanted to do was find companies that have offices that were physically in New York City. And for this particular test case, I just imported a bunch of companies that work in finance that have over 11 employees. So I have about 233 companies here. And what I did first to find more information about them is I enriched the company. The way to do that is just by clicking enrich data and going to enrich company. And you'll see it pops up right here. And all it requires is a LinkedIn URL, which we were already able to get from the import. It comes with a bunch of set information that we don't have to do anything to acquire, which includes the description, the primary industry, the size, the location, and most importantly, their domain and LinkedIn URLs. So in order to do this integration, all we had to do was input the LinkedIn URL column and we we're able to run the integration that way. When you click on the results here, you'll see that we have the company description, we have their logo, we have their name, we have their size. So now we have some data points in the company and I need to find more information about what this company does and where it is located. Because I am reaching out for my friend involving commercial real estate, it's really important that I have their address. The entire point of this campaign is to reach out to companies and say, hey, I know you're already located at this address, but are you paying too much on your lease? We can help negotiate your lease for you. So what I did next was I found their New York City office address using a tool in Clay called Claygent. What Claygent does is it searches the internet for different data points and is able to retrieve pretty much any information that is publicly available about a company and send it back to your Clay table. So in this case, I will show you the prompt. In this prompt, I said, figure out whether name, this is the company name, and I found their LinkedIn URL right with it. Currently has offices in New York City. Search anywhere on the internet necessary to get this information and output the office address. Once I ran it, I was able to pop out their office address address for all of the companies that had office addresses readily available. And for the ones that didn't, it just popped out in New York City, which is super helpful for us as well, because we're able to use that later on in our copy. Now we have information on the company and we have their address. So for the next point of personalization, use a prompt that figured out what does the company do? What is the value prop that they provide? to their customers. So all I did for this one was I got our OpenAI integration, which all you have to do to do that is to type in OpenAI and you'll see it right here. And within the prompt for the integration, I said, using the company description, tell me one thing that the company likely does very well for their customers. Format your answer as an action. For example, if the company is good at building sandcastles, say building sandcastles, and here is the description. And I put the company description, which we got from this enriched company list right here into the prompt for our AI integration. So using just that information, it was able to pop out in under six words, a little description, pretty much outlining what the company does. Navigating global financial markets, promoting diversity in technology, education, and leadership. So after I popped out that output, I had to edit it so it didn't have any capitalizations or punctuations, which is very important for formatting the email itself. And the way I did that was by using a formula. So what I can do is click add column and formula that allows you to change text, use conditional runs to output certain things if you wanted to. And so for this particular formula, I said, make company's strengths response lowercase and without any quotations or punctuation. And it was able to do that very easily for me at scale. Then I realized, okay, so if I'm sending an email and I'm mentioning their office location in the email, it's going to seem really weird and spammy to have their entire address in the email. And the prompt that I used for that here is make this location normalized by just mentioning the first part of the address. For example, if the address is 30 Broad Street, 14th floor, New York City, then just print 30 Broad Street. And then I provided the location of course, for it to casualize. What I wanted to do next was to find restaurants near where the prospect's office is and offer them an in-person meeting to discuss their leases based on where their office is located. So I actually used our Yelp integration for this. And what I did was in the settings of the integration, I set the location that we're searching for as just the office of the company. For search query, I just put dinner. And what this does is it finds the top rated restaurants near the location based on the search query I gave it. So it found five dinner places next to each one of the offices that I asked it to look for. And you can see it's printed out the results right here. So for places that have just New York City, of course, it's going to pop out the same one every time. But for places that have a specific location, like 30 Broad Street, it's going to pop out a different restaurant every single time. Now we're able to show them a location that is familiar to them and ask them if they want to have a meeting there. So next, all I did was normalize the restaurant name so it didn't include any extra characters to look good in the email. 
and we are now moving on to the next step of the process, which is finding people who work for the companies that we have mapped out in this clay table. So what I did next was I found the people who are the presidents, the founders, the co-founders, or the CEOs of the companies in question. We were able to find 190 of these verified leads, and all we had to do was import them into a clay table. For those wondering how to do this, all you have to do is click new table, go down to find people from LinkedIn, then use a clay table. In this case, of course, it would be the CRE table. Type in the job titles of the people that you're looking for. You can also filter on things such as words in their bio, how long they've been in a current position, and their location. So after that, we had a couple more enrichments to do. The first one was using a formula to separate their first and last name. Next, we use what's called an email waterfall. So what an email waterfall does is it uses several different email providers within Clay to work together to find an email. So in this case, we have ICPs first looking for an email account. If it doesn't find an email here, it goes to the next one. And what we're able to do is find verified work emails for every single one of the people in this list. After that, we had a couple more things which was just normalizing the company name and also mapping out the different variables that we had found in the previous table. So now we have all the information and all of the columns needed to create a beautiful email campaign. So we're in Instantly, which is my email sequencing tool of choice. And what I've done here is I've built out copy. There are sections of this copy, for example, first name, company name, location, casualization, response, edited company strengths, and normalized restaurant. Each one of these locations with the brackets is a variable. And these variables are going to, of course, change depending on the person that we're reaching out to. Here's an actual example. Hey James, I noticed that Numerics is located at 99 Park Avenue. I was wondering if you've checked market prices for commercial space recently, asking because you might be paying more than you need to. We help NYC-based businesses like you determine if there are any ways you can save costs on your current space so you can go back to focusing on providing real-time intelligence capabilities for trading and risk management. Park Avenue Tavern is in your area. Any interest in a dinner on me to talk about it? We are pointing out a problem that they might be having, which is paying more for their commercial lease than they need to. We are showing effort by regurgitating their company name, their office space, and what they do, as well as a restaurant that is near their office and we are giving them a call to action as well as a lead magnet which is a dinner on me and reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any questions I help build out clay tables for other companies and I am more than happy to help you out as well